Good evening, everybody, and thank you for coming. Today is an historic day. Pope Benedict has resigned in circumstances of his own choosing. And while it's a shock to me, we can be certain that he did so after very careful and prayerful consideration. I think it's significant that he has chosen to make this announcement on the occasion of World Day for the Sick, the Feast of Our Lady of Lourdes. Our Lady always pints to Christ, and Pope Benedict pointed to Christ today as the chief pastor of the church. His announcement echoes his words on the day he was elected. Then he described himself as a humble worker in the vineyard of the Lord. And today, with typical humility, courage, and love for the church, he has clearly come to the view that the Lord now wants him to devote the rest of his physical and spiritual energies by serving the church in prayer. I think this is a profound act of humility, a conscientious and responsible decision to hand over the ministry of the successor of Peter at a time of great challenge for the church and for faith in the modern world. With all people of goodwill, I ask the Lord to bless Pope Benedict as he prepares for retirement and to give him many years to serve the church with his dedicated prayer. And on behalf of the Catholic Church in Ireland, in union with my fellow bishops, I thank him for his generous service to the church, universal, and for the great love and concern he has always shown for the church in Ireland. And I ask people also to pray for those who will have the responsibility of choosing his successor. Thank you. You might, uh, we'll take questions now. If you might introduce yourself, please. Well, it hasn't happened in centuries. On reflection, it's not that surprising because I think uh, he is the man who has the courage to take decisions like that, and he has done so after careful reflection. And uh, it takes courage, but it also comes from a love of the church. He's concerned, he talks about, uh, in this changing world and uh, shaken by challenges. And he has decided to do this for the love of the church, I think. Okay. Um, now over here, please. Go yes, ma'am. In fact, I wasn't that aware. I know he's 87 years of age. I saw him last November. I met him at the end of the meeting for the Pontifical Council for Christian Unity when he congratulated us, Ireland, for the success of the Eucharistic Congress. And in October, I saw him during the Synod on the day after the 12th of October, I think it was. It was a day on which he had attended the Synod from 9 to 12. He came up to the Apostolic Palace and met the Patriarch of Constantinople, met a group of bishops and cardinals, and then came back down to lunch. So, okay, he, he, his movements around were quite, are quite feeble, but his thinking and speaking and uh, endurance is quite strong. So I was, in that sense, I was shocked and surprised. Ben, Sorry, Brendan Wright. Yes, if I'm alive then, I certainly will have a vote. Uh, it's immense responsibility. Those uh, electors who are under 80, cardinals who are under 80 years of age have, an, have a vote in the election of the Pope. Sam, do you have any thoughts as of the elector who might be the next Pope? Have you thought that? Well, I haven't. Uh, I reflected there today. There are still four or five weeks. It's a time in which I will be reflecting, I'm sure, with all the other cardinals and praying. And I ask the prayers of all people of goodwill for the guidance of the Holy Spirit for the, those who will have the, the immense responsibility of choosing the successor of Pope Benedict the 16th.
Well, I think I, I just I talked about the significance of today, the World Day of, uh, for the Sick. It just reveals, I think, an awareness of his increasing physical limitations. He said that the service of the Holy Father in, involves prayer and suffering, but also physical and mental energies. And he points out too that his energies mentally and physically are declining due to his age. And that's what, he, that's what he's uh, pointing to there. As regards the beginning of Lent, I don't know. Uh, yes, it's an important week. Obviously, this, this was the week uh, to make this announcement. And it implies, I suppose, that he is at the service of the church. And that, but he points all the time to Christ as a chief pastor. You know, he's humble enough to let go and hand over to somebody else. just don't know. Uh, I think he, he felt that Pope John Paul II taught us how to die in suffering, you know, and he acknowledged that great service which uh, John Paul II gave, did to the world by his endurance and suffering and perseverance and strength. Pope Benedict obviously has this, summed up his own situation and decided that the demands are so strong, so heavy, that he thinks a successor should be appointed at this stage. Over on your right, Gordon. Uh, I just don't know. He talks about uh, something recent months, I'm not sure, but as I say, I've described how I saw him in October, November, but I think this is a prayerful responsible decision which he has taken after a lot of thought and examination of conscience and he uses the word I renounce the ministry it's a very solemn declaration on the 28th of February at 8 o'clock he will cease to be Pope over here well I think he he has left a great legacy in bringing us back to basics, that the important thing is our friendship and knowledge of Jesus Christ, who came into the world to reveal, to reveal the love of God for each one of us. He keeps calling us back, especially in that document on the door of faith, that the call is to enter in through a door that's always open into communion with God and to friendship with Jesus Christ. He has left us uh, three great encyclicals, beginning with God is love and then hope, and then the, the necessity of charity, of love of God, but love of neighbor. He was very emphatic that the, the second column of the faith is charity. Uh, care for those who are poor, who are oppressed, and he has denounced the scandal of poverty in the world and the scandal of war. Alec. Go ahead. Well, he, uh, way back, as far back as 2006, he spoke to us at the Ad Limina about the scandals, and he, he gave clear direction then what was to be done, that the, the truth was to be established, uh, victims were to be cared for, healing promoted, and justice done for all. So I think he, he has emphasized how seriously, and again in the, the, the meeting with us in 2010, when he met the Irish bishops, issued a pastoral letter, he has engaged and emphasized the need to address the, the scandals. But is it possible we have a successor who's only to that? I'm sure it is, and I hope, I hope we will have a successor who will address all that, that problem and the many other problems which are hinted at there in today's announcement, and the whole problem of the eclipse of, of God from the consciousness of so many people. Uh, they, he talks often about this, the tyranny of relativism, of the forget, forgetting of God. So, yes, hopefully the successor will continue the work, of course. He was very emphatic in continuing the work of this new evangelization, new announcing of the gospel. Not new message, but in new ways, new fervor. And I think that successor will have to take on that, of course.
two questions left yes. over here. Lady. Well, I don't know how, how much, uh, what the stresses were. They are the stresses of uh, any, a leader in, in the church. Uh, that was one of the factors, but he's, he's clearly indicating that he feels that there are, that the, the demands are so great that he needs somebody with more physical and sp sp uh, physical energy to address those. Jerry. No, I'll answer the first part of your question, which is, what would I like to see in a new pope? A man who will continue the work of announcing Jesus Christ to the world as God's love, the revelation of God's love. A man who will emphasize that the second, uh, after the profession of faith, the most important thing is this charity, this love for the oppressed. And I would like continuation of the emphasis on ecumenism. Pope Benedict has a great interest in ecumenism in all the dialogues that are going on with all the other uh, churches and religious communities and with the religions of the world. That is most important, I think. And somebody, again, who will denounce uh, the scandal of war and poverty in the world. I don't think that eventuality is going to arise. Last question here. Well, I, I'll have to postpone my answer until <laughs> for a long time, I think. Okay, thank you very much for your attendance here today and for your questions.